Hey, what is going on everyone? Vega here from Serpent X Tech, and in this video, I want to go over how to mine Dynex coin on a Windows system. I've done a number of different coverage or videos on Dynex coin covering about their updates and upgrades because there's been quite a few since the project's release that it makes some of my older videos outdated. So as of August 2023, this is how you, an end user, can mine Dynex on your Windows system. Now, this isn't going to be a full project breakdown. A number of my colleagues have covered Dynex coin on their uh, various social media posts or YouTube. I'll have a couple linked down in the description for you. But I just want to focus on getting you up and running. You're going to need a wallet just like you would with any other cryptocurrency. It isn't supported on hardware wallets just yet. Uh, hopefully, that will come in the future. But there is a number of different options. It, on the main website, DonXCoin.org, you just click on Get. Scroll down a little bit and you will see the exchanges that it's supported on, uh, as well as the wallets. If we click on wallets, we have the mobile or web wallet, and then we have what I like to use, the desktop wallet. When you click the desktop wallet, it's going to take you to their GitHub. Get whatever the latest version is at time of you looking into this video. Uh, right now, we're on 2.2.2 revision B. Uh, and anytime you download something from GitHub or a zip file, you're going to need to extract it. So it's going to go to your downloads, wherever that might be, usually in your downloads folder. And then you just right click extract files here or right click extract files to wherever you want. I like to keep mine um, in a specific folder that I can access. Now the mobile wallet, if you needed to, uh, it's dynexwallet.dynexcoin.org. Um, I'll just have a link down in the description for you. But if you come here, you just want to click on create your wallet now. And then you're going to want to put in an email and a password twice. When you do that, follow the steps and the process to set it up. As far as the desktop wallet, as soon as you launch it, it's going to need time to sync, right? So let the let let it sync up, but you can still interact with it, and you can still get your receiving address. Here you would see we're presented with a mnemonic seed phrase, uh, which you want to back up in case you need to restore your wallet. If you lose these words, you will lose access to your funds. So don't lose these words. Basically, what you're doing here is you're going to be copying it and saving it, re either writing it down in a secret notebook in a safe somewhere, or I don't like to keep it on the same computer that I might use my day-to-day -day tasks just in case that computer gets compromised. But you just need to write these down, secure it somewhere, and then repeat it here, right? And then once we hit that, hit OK, we're basically telling the device, you know, hey, I'm, I'm good to go. Uh, I have my seed phrase backed up. But if you didn't back it up and you lose this, again, you will lose your funds. But we click OK, and now here we are. We can do our send. We can do our receiving. We can do our see our transactions and our address book just plain straight to the point nothing we nothing too special but we do need to copy our receiving address right so if you copy this you're going to need that for the miners in order to connect to the pools and get situated so just copy and write that down somewhere make sure you do not lose it okay as far as miners go there's only two uh at least right now we're hoping bz miner the devs uh, of other miners will integrate dynex um, in the future, but 1.0 Miner for NVIDIA, if you have NVIDIA GPU, or SRB Miner if you have an AMD GPU is what I would recommend right now at time of filming. As far as the miners go, you can easily download those. Remember, you're going to need to um, extract it, right? You can see the zip folder right here for Win64, so this is the one you're going to want. And then SRB Miner, kind of the same thing. They also sometimes provide you updates with um, additional commands that might help out with your performance, which in this case, I am testing out this one right here, the GPU-Dynex-R to play around with performance metrics and try to get some additional hash rate out of our devices. They also on SRB at least give you the updates for how to you know update your Hive OS or what have you to the latest miner, which they already have implemented. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you scroll down, Further down, whenever you go to one of these GitHub pages, which I will always recommend do, doing so, sometimes the websites that say they're one company or another can lead you astray, but scroll down and just get the version you need. For, for our case, Windows 11, Windows 10, just go down to SRB Multiminer uh, 232Win64.zip. Uh, We're going to download that. I already have, and I have the files right here. And usually the the miner will have a bunch of defaults that all you need to do is manage or update so you can see here 
They allow us to dual mine Dynex, Alphium, Ironfish, Caspa, like a whole bunch of different coins. In this case, I'm just going to show you not so much the dual mining, but the actual direct mining of Dynex. So we're going to left click to highlight this particular batch file, right click it, and on Windows 11, you need to do show more options and you want to hit edit. On Windows 10, just right click and hit edit. You may get a virus notification. Just tell your antivirus or whatever program you're using to protect your devices that it's okay and that you want to run it anyways. Here is the default batch file. It tells SRB miner to disable the CPU, right? By default, it does that for like pretty much every algorithm uh, because SRB miner can be used to CPU mine certain coins, not just not Dynex. Then you choose the algorithm Dynex. So all that's already set. You don't really need to do anything. It's the pools and the wallet address you need to really worry about. So how do we find the pool? Well, we go to our favorite website, miningpoolstats.stream. And when we go here, we can search the coin by typing in the name Dynex. And we see all the pools available. Now, Dynex, the project itself, uh, did an update recently where they're trying to keep the hash rate decentralized and spread out, which we should all be doing. Projects don't often enforce this, but we should all be doing no matter which cryptocurrency we're on, uh, just to mitigate any attack vectors or risk of 51% attacks. But... You can see all the pools here. Uh, we got a couple of them around 27, 25%. So we're going to check out Deep Miner's pool. Hero Miners just came online recently. Let's go check them out real quick. And you can see when we go to the page, we have everything we need. So we're going to need the Malib right here. And we're going to need the servers. In this case, uh, we're going to use the US East. So us2.dynex.herominers.com uh, colon port1120. And so what we want to do is we want to update our batch file to look at that particular pool. So we're going to do it right here. There we go. And you can separate or have different pools separated by a comma. And that's exactly what they did here. They have a number of different pools. I'm just going to choose two for right now. So we're going to use deep miners and hero miners. And when we go to these pages, a lot of times they have a get started page to help you out or point you in the right direction. So in this case, we're going to add pool.deepminers. Dot com and we need to use port 4444 so let's add that to our batch file make sure you remove any spaces or anything like that it just needs to go back to back so you see when i added it it, it spaced it down so there we go we got deep miners pool comma dynex hero miners pool with their port numbers now we need to add our wallet address remember that wallet that we got earlier Let's go ahead and copy that and let's go ahead and input that. Now our batch file for SRB miner is set up or configured to mine. And because we're on an AMD GPU, we can start hashing right away. However, I did mention that there was a new command with this latest version of miner, which is called uh, GPU Dynex R, which you, know, you can play around with to find some uh, greater tuning. As far as 1Z miner, because I don't have an NVIDIA system to show you, it's basically the same process. You're going to want to extract the, uh, the folder or the files to a specific place where you know. And then you're going to want to find the default batch file. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go to downloads real quick. Sometimes when we attempt to download something, our browser or antivirus will get in the way. You can see it blocked my download of 1.0 miner earlier. But we're going to want to make sure we download it, tell our antivirus it's okay, and then we want to get go ahead and open it. Now, in the bottom right here, I just got a virus notification, and I just need to tell it, at least if you're using this type of virus uh, protection, the basic virus protection is tell it, hey, you know what, allow it, okay? And then I'll be able to download it again and actually extract the files. If you bump into your antivirus uh, giving you issues, just remove it or disable it and add an exclusion later. All right, here we are. It popped up. So now we're going to click this little folder icon to pop it up. And again, it's going to show up as a zip. So when I click on that, it's not really extracted. We want to do extract all and a new window pops up. Hit extract all again. It's going to pop up in another window where we'll have all our different files. There it is. And here's a default batch file. So we need to right click that again, show more options on Windows 11 and then hit edit on Windows 10. Right click and hit edit, hit more info and run anyway. And here's our default batch file. Now, the beautiful thing is I can copy exactly what we just did for the other miner, SRB miner, as far as the pool, the port numbers, and the wallet address. I can just copy that over to this miner. 
And this will help you get anybody on the Windows um, and an NVIDIA, a Windows system using NVIDIA GPU at least get up and running. So it already has the algorithm with dash A Dynex. We just replaced our wallet address and now we just need to tell it the pools. And it does it a little bit differently, but let's try to replicate that as best we can. So instead of copying everything all the way into the stratum, we're just going to copy right about there and make some quick adjustments. If you want to, I will post this down in the description. You can just copy and paste. Just make sure you replace the wallet address, okay? So dash O is the pool for one Z miner. And there we go. We got our deep miners pool. Our backup pool is hero miners. And now we need to make sure that we update or add our MOLF endpoints. On SRB miner, we didn't even have any of that. So to add our MOLF endpoints, I'm going to give you this basic command. Dash dash MOLF dash endpoint. And then I have the deep miners malab, but then I also have the neural pool malab. And remember that hero miners actually provided one to us right here at the top. de.dynex.herominers.com or yeah, .com colon uh, 1119. And you could actually copy that in there as well. It's okay if you mix and match malabs. It won't hurt anything as long as it has a good connection. So we could just replace that one with this one right here. And now we got it set up on SRB miner. And let's see how Dynex, or excuse me, one zero miner wants to set it up. So it's basically the same, separated by commas. The port number is shared between these two. Interesting. But the port number is not shared between hero miners and deep miners pool. So we're going to make sure we include that. So the address, colon, the port number, deep miners, uh, 9001, hero miners, 1119. And so now there is your basic config to get one zero miner working on a Windows system with an NVIDIA GPU. As far as SRB miner goes, we're all set. We can start this right now. If I start it, your, the video will become choppy for you. So let's not do that. Instead, I want to show you some metrics because that new program or that new command that SRB miner has added allows us to tune between 1 and 16. And matter of fact, I've been testing it out and I want to share that with you. So let me go ahead and do that right now. But we're just going to add it at the end of our commands here, right above the pause. GPU-Dynex-R. And I'm going to choose, let's say, 4. Now, on my chart here, it's going to be hard to understand, but I'm going to do my best to, to bring it to you. Basically, I kept the clocks the same. Memory clocks, power draw, everything's the same. The only thing that changed was this command, using this command... And what I found for this particular GPU, which is the 7950, or excuse me, the 7900 XTX, um, is that the lower the number it is, the better as far as hash rate goes. But that's not always the case. If we sort this by the highest hash rate to lowest hash rate, you would see that one did get me the highest hash rate. Number two got me okay. Number four. And then as we go higher, the hash rate goes away. Stock means you're not putting that command in at all. You're just leaving it alone. But you can see 16 wasn't at the bottom of the chart. 10 was. So each GPU, specifically and especially on the AMD side, will perform a little bit differently. So I would challenge you to play around with this metric. Again, the values are 1 or 16, anywhere in, that, in, in between those two numbers, and see what's best for your setup, your GPUs, and all that good stuff. But I just wanted to notate some of the differences, like the, the chip numbers it saw, uh, and these particular statistics, I wouldn't pay too much attention to. Just focus on the valuation that you use and the hash rate. And more importantly, is it stable? But if you double click the batch file that you have in your miners now, what will happen is you can actually start it up right away. So if, if I were to save that batch file that we did for 1Z miner, right, where we have a dot mine, it would start mining. But I like to kind of differentiate all of my batch files. So I'm going to hit File, Save As. Come down here to Save As Type and make sure I change it to All Files. And then I'm going to give it something unique. Like let's say Dynex Test dot BAT because it is a batch file and we want to save it as a batch file. So hit Save there and you're going to see it pop up. There it is. So it popped up. All we did was take the default and always leave the default there in case you need to go back. Maybe you didn't do something right. Maybe you omitted something important. Leave the batch file, the original default there. Edit the, the default to whatever you need to. And you can edit it to mine whatever program you want. Now, it doesn't have all the default batch uh, programs that we've seen with SRB Miner. All the default miners um, and coins in there. But this will at least get you in the right direction. 
for SRB miner, I really like it because it gives you all the defaults and all the different coins you can mine. And all you got to do is edit it just a little bit to add your wallet, your address, and of course, what algorithm you want. You can see here, you know, we got Dynex, Ergo, ETC, Dual Mine, ETC, or ETAL, Caspa, Micro Bitcoin. They got all kinds of different coins here, but I changed them and I give it a unique name that makes it show up towards the bottom so I can easily access them. And you can see here that I've been flopping around between Deep Miners Pool and a couple other pools and a couple other different cryptocurrencies. So you just focus on whatever you want. But to mine Dynex, this is the best way to do it. Very easy to set up. Double click that batch file and it will start mining. And then you can tune this parameter to your likings. Obviously, you want to adjust your core clocks and everything to be in the ballpark of what you want. Uh, it's all about efficiency. I know some people go for highest hash rate, but you really want to dial things back and get your GPU as efficient as possible and hashing away. If you don't know what the metrics are that you should be using, I would challenge you to go check out hashrate.no. They got a great database. You can compare that against what what to mine has. What to mine just has some basic settings uh, where hashrate.no has a little bit more fine tune and, and, and granular, uh, you know, granular detail, so to speak. Uh, and here we can just go and find our GPU, right? Let's say we're looking for the 7900 XTX. We click on that and we can see what our core clock should be, what our mem clock should be, and what our undervolt should be. Now, please note that some of these overclocks, like if we go to maybe like a, an NVIDIA card or something like that, like the 3070 Ti, some of the information that will be presented will, will actually show up and they're, they're more for Hive, not for Windows. Uh, so just be mindful of that, that there is a difference. Uh, the memory clock is, is going to be doubled sometimes in Windows than it is on Hive uh, or a Linux-based operating system. So I just want to make sure that you are 100% aware of that. You could see this with the 5700 XT where it says 1500 megahertz for Windows, but on Unix or Linux or Hive, it would only be a memory clock of 750. So just be mindful of that, but just find the GPU that you have and then edit the batch file to include your wallet address make sure you choose a pool that is best suited for your location like if you mouse over the little icons here you can see what country they're in because you want to choose a stratum that's closest to you the the lower the latency the lower the ping the better off you are and get connected but that's going to do it for today's video please do me a favor on the way out hit the like button make sure to get subscribed hit notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out some of the links in the description to help support the channel and what we do here and you just have yourself a wonderful day take care i'll catch you next one Thank you.